West Ham continued their preseason yesterday with a 2-2 draw away to Dagenham and Redbridge. Not that we got to see it. It's one of those ones where they just don't show us for some reason and then upload highlights after. I don't understand why they do that, but that's what they did. However, uh, if you were at the game, let us know in the comments. How do you think it went? Who were the standouts? What were your vibes from the game? What was the formation? All that, all that stuff. Let us know because I'm genuinely intrigued. It involved all of the uh, youth team players that didn't travel to Australia. Those that did travel to Australia came on as well and got involved. And then of course, all the international players who uh, didn't travel to Australia. So you're talking your Cornets, your Aguets, your Suchets, your Sufals, your Ariolas, people like that. They all played roles in the game. And I'm talking about roles. I mean, Cornet looked decent in the highlights. I mean, two goals, Mubama and Cornet, Mubama getting yet another, Cornet getting the assist for Mubama's goal and scoring the first, which was a really nice goal as well. And it's giving me renewed hope that he's going to have a role to play this season. When he did play last season, pre-injury he looked lively when he did play post-injury the first couple of games he came back again looked really lively and then his uh, form dropped off a little bit towards the end of the season but I say a little bit he was it was pointless in the end of the season but it gives me renewed hope that this season he could do something. He's obviously coming back off this massive injury and now we should be able to start getting that corne that we bought in form. And if he does, he can play a really important role. We do not have a backup to Jared Bowen on that right-hand side. We're often trying to force Ben Rama or four nows out there. So having someone like Corne who could more naturally play it would be really exciting. And we need more backup on the left-hand side and he provides that. So I'm really interested to see how he goes forward this season. But one person we won't be seeing this season is Zhao. Pelina, at least at this point. Uh, reports coming out yesterday via the likes of X and Sean Whetstone and people like that, uh, that we have put in a second bid. The second bid was 50 million, like we all thought. It was rejected and we're probably just gonna leave it there. And I think that's probably the right thing to do at that point. I like Zhao Pelina. I really genuinely do. And I was having conversations with people a couple of weeks ago that maybe 50 million is about where I would go to with Jao Pelina, but I certainly wouldn't pay more than that. And I think that's coming, uh, that's a, a bigger problem of West Ham in the transfer window this season and this window specifically and something we'll get onto. But when we're talking about Paulinho specifically, he is a really, really good player. And he's a great example of someone who was brought in for not, he, it wasn't cheap. Now, now we think of it as cheap because he's done well and now Fulham can ask as much as 15 million for him. Now, Fulham are asking more, but that's fine. I think they should do that. That's their player. We did the exact same thing with Declan Rice, for example. Arsenal came in and bid in a lot of money. They put a lot of money on the table and we went, no, that's not enough. And we just kept pushing it until we got what we wanted. The same thing that Gio has always spoken about of Harry Maguire going to Manchester United. I think that's the right way for clubs of our size to do business. We can't just let people go for cheaper than they're worth. We can't. It's just not something we should do. And so Fulham doing the same with Paulinho and going, do you know what? No, 50 million is not enough. We want more than that. Doing the same thing with Mitrovic at the moment. I'm fine with them doing that. It's annoying because I want Paulinho, but it, at the end of the day, I understand it. But from our point of view, we cannot be paying more than that. And that's the bigger problem, right? Is we haven't bought anyone this season. And I know, for example, Gonzo uploaded a video a couple of hours ago on the forum channel. I would highly recommend you go and checking it out, talking about our lack of business so far this summer, uh, lack of completed signings. And I understand the fear and the frustration that that causes. It certainly is raising it with me. I think the ideal way to do business uh, Villa are a good example of this to some extent. They've not been as insane as they were last year, but they still made a couple of really big signings, but they went and do them early. They get them done. They get them over the line. They clearly know what they're doing. Before it comes to the window, they know who they're targeting. They know how much they're going to pay for them, and they go and they make those things happen early doors. That's the ideal way of doing it. You want players in before preseason starts, so you can get them playing in preseason. You want them in as early as possible to integrate them into the team, but also because that means you have a plan going forward. And the one thing that is frustrating to me about this Paulinho situation, and uh, with the other defensive midfielders that we've been linked to, whole host, whole selection of them, all playing very different stuff, is that I don't feel that. We knew Declan Rice was going this summer. Not only did we knew since January, because, you know, the, that was when Arsenal were first talking to him. And apparently when David Sullivan, well, I don't know if he did it in January or last summer, has apparently promised one more season to him and then he could go. So we knew for certain he was leaving. But also, we just all knew for years that he was going. And so we should have had a plan before this summer going into it going, this is who we're going to get. Bam, let's make it happen. 
because we're stuck in this situation now where other clubs know we have a huge amount of money, but we aren't, can't afford to pay that huge amount of money out to everyone. It's two completely separate scenarios because other clubs like Fulham, for example, go, well, you've just got 105 million for Rice. We'll have some of that. And that's fine. From their point of view, that's entirely true. It's annoying. It's really flipping annoying, but it's 100% true. But we can't afford to pay that much money for every player we're being linked with and every player we're interested in. There are bargains out there. Not bargains. Bargains is actually a derogatory term for this. I don't think it's bargains. There are players that are good value for money. And I know that's, again, a frustrating thing to talk about. But what I mean by that is look at Borges, right? Now, obviously, we're paying quite a lot of money for someone who has never played who's not a Premier League footballer, he's not played senior football really, he's not, you know, he's, he, he was the best youth player in the country last season. But if you look at how much City were charging last season to Southampton, when Southampton rocks up and bought half of their youth team, it felt like, in uh, Adozi and Lavia and Bazunu and people like that, it was all about the same price, it was all around the 10 million range. And so 14 million isn't actually that out of the ordinary for that kind of thing with Manchester City. It might be slightly different if you were going for a different player from a different club. But it represents good value for money. That is punt money. And actually, those type of players, those type of signings, which Borges, again, this reports yesterday, is we're now close to completion on that one, um, which is, you know, fun. It feels like it's now dragging out, but that's only just because we were told that it was basically done a couple of days ago and then it's not done yet. And so now we're like, what's the hold up? I'm, I'm fine and I'm calm with that. Those type of signings, smart, Good value for money. I think Zakaria falls under that as well. If we manage to actually eventually somehow get that one over the line, that one stalled. I think it's from Juventus' side, although I've got no idea. I've sort of been trying to keep away from that side of it a little bit. But people like that, I think, can allow us one big splurge. And that needs to be the Declan Rice replacement. Not necessarily, and by big splurge, I mean allow us to overpay, over overpay the odds on a player. You know, pay over the odds because... With Rice, what we're losing is that 7 out of 10 every single week. You know, we can talk about his abilities and how good he is and at his peak and all that sort of stuff, and that's all true. But the bigger thing for me is that we're losing someone who is basically guaranteeing you 7 out of 10 every week. He wasn't this season, but before that, and for most of this season still, 7 out of 10 consistently. Bang, 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 every game. And with, with a position as important as a defensive midfielder, having that consistency is incredibly important. And so... The smart signings, like Borges, potentially like Zakaria, where we're not getting absolutely fleeced by other clubs because they know we have a lot of money, that can allow us to maybe pay a little bit over the odds for some of these players, which makes me think it wouldn't surprise me if we went back in for Polinia one last time, slightly later into the slightly later into the to the sort of window. Now, how much later? I know there's not much time left in this window. Trust me. I fully appreciate that bit of it. And it is a little bit concerning. Something that uh, Gonzo was speaking about in the video from this morning, which again, go check it out if you haven't already. Talking about like, think about the starting a lineup that's going to line up in the first game of the season. And you know, it's going to be Downs. It's going to be Suchek and these sort of things. Not good. But at the same time, as long as we get it right, I don't mind. I really don't mind because getting it right in this window is more important than the first game of the season. It's more important than the first couple of games of the season before the window shuts. We're talking about setting up this summer for the long term at West Ham. We have a lot of aging players. Look at the likes of Cresswell being linked with moves away. Look at the likes of Antonio being linked with moves away. These are vital players to West Ham United's squad right now, but their age is considerably past where we want it to be and their abilities are waning. These are the sort of players that we need to be able to replace and upgrade on. These are the sort of players that we need to be looking to figure out how they can't be those vital players again. That's long-term stuff. This window is really important to the long-term future of West Ham. And for me, getting that right is more important than getting it done quickly. Now, again, I'm sort of getting a bit more impatient as we go. I'm still at the stage where I am like, okay, fine. We can take our time, but I am getting somewhat impatient. I'm thinking, let's let's get this Borges one done. Let's get that fight. That's a fun one. He's quick. You know, everyone loves a quick winger. He's fast. He does a lot of running. He's young, which is exciting. Yeah, that's an exciting one. Let's get that done so we can all be a little bit calm. Maybe we get to see him in a preseason game soon. That'll be fun. You know, linking up with Bubama. Good times. But getting it right is more important to me. But am I being naive? 
Am I being naive? Let me know in the comment section below. Am I being stupid? Am I being silly? Am I being as dumb as I was potentially with the Harvey Barnes one? That was a fun read in the comment section. No one liked that one. That's fine. Am I being that stupid? Am I being naive? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, if you were at the match yesterday, let me know how it went. I'm interested to read everyone's thoughts because we didn't get to see it. And I do love preseason. And Mubama is exciting more and more. I'm starting to think he really has a chance of potentially getting some first team football this uh, season, more than he did last season. Let me know. Anyway, if you're new around here, make sure to like the button. Like, blah, blah, blah. If you're let me take that again. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and like the video because it helps us out massively. Thank you all for watching and I will see you. Uh, I think Saturday's our next preseason game, so I'll be doing a watch along then. Maybe I'll do a video between then. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Hopefully, new signing. Borges would be fun, wouldn't it? I don't know. See you later, everyone. Bye.